My name is Robinson. I am from England. I am 18 years old. My father is German. My mother is English. I have two brothers. I have one sister. We are a good family. My father is a good businessman. We have money. I have a good school. I have a good life. But I have a dream. I want to travel. I want to see the world. My father is a good man. He wants the best for me. But my dream is not his dream. He is not happy. The situation is not easy. It is morning. My father is in his room. He wants to speak with me. I go to his room. My father has some questions. My father wants to know why I want to travel. My father says, traveling is dangerous. Traveling is not comfortable. You can die. I think about it. Traveling is dangerous. It is not comfortable. I can die. But it is also very interesting. I can see new countries. I can meet new people. I think about traveling every day. Maybe my mother can help me. I speak with my mother. I tell my mother, I want to travel. I want to see the world. Please speak with my father. Maybe with your help, I can travel. My mother loves me, but she thinks that traveling is dangerous. She thinks that my place is at home. She thinks that life in England is the best for me. One year later, I visit one big town. The name of this town is Hall. I meet my friend. His father has a ship. They travel to London. My friend tells me, go with me. I think about it. I am not prepared. But I can try if traveling is for me. I go to London. I am very happy. It is my first long journey. It is very interesting. The first hour is good. But then we have problems. We see a storm. The storm is big. The wind is strong. The ship goes up and down. I have fear. I think about my home. I think about my comfortable bed. The storm is finished in the morning. The weather is nice. And the evening is beautiful. Everything is quiet. One man comes to me. We speak. We speak about the storm. I speak about my fear. The man gives me a drink. I drink very much. I sleep very well at night. The next day, I forget about my home. I forget about my comfortable bed. I dream more about traveling. The next day, our ship is slow because the wind is not strong. Then the wind is strong again. We go fast. A new storm comes. This storm is bigger. I am scared. The men are scared too. The waves are very big. The waves are like mountains. I see other ships. The ships are like toys. The waves play with the ships. I want to go home again. The storm is very big. The men ask God for help. Then one man sees a hole in the ship. Water is inside. It is a bad situation. Many men go down. They pump the water out. I am very scared. I can't move. One man comes to me. He says, go down and help. So I go down. We pump the water out. I hear a gun. It is a signal from our captain. It is a signal that we have a big problem. Our ship is very broken. 
Our ship is full of water. We work very hard. We pump the water out, but the hole is very big. More and more water is inside the ship. The weather is better. The waves are smaller. But the ship is full of water. We need help. We see another ship before our ship. The men from the ship send a small boat. The men on the boat go to our ship. The men help us. We go on their boat. Fifteen minutes later, our big ship goes underwater. We are safe on the small boat. We see a land. We go to the land. We see people on the beach. They wait for us. They help us. They give us some money. We can go to London or Hull. I go to London. When I am in London, I meet a captain. The captain goes to Africa. I think that I can make some money there. The captain tells me about the business in Africa. He tells me what to buy in England. He tells me what people in Africa need. The journey to Africa is very good. I have a lot of money after this journey. I am happy. I want to travel more. I want to do more business. I want to learn how to control the ship. The captain teaches me how to control the ship. I go to Africa again. The journey starts well, but soon we have big problems. We see a ship. It is not an English ship. It is a pirate ship. The pirates want to take our ship. Their ship is fast. Soon they are near our ship. The pirates attack us. Many pirates go on our ship. They kill our men. We can't win. We stop the fight. Now we are prisoners. I am young and strong. I must work as a slave. I work for the captain of the pirates. I feel very sad. I have a bad life. I must work hard. I work every day. I work in the house. I work in the garden. The captain tells me what to do. I don't like my work. I want to change my situation. I want to be free again. It is morning. I meet a young woman. She works in the house. She is so beautiful. She is also a slave. She cleans the house. I speak with her. She doesn't speak my language, but I feel that she understands me. When she sees me, she is happy, and I am happy too. Sometimes she touches me, but it is only a short moment. Slaves can't be together. I think about the young woman very often. I want to meet her every day, but she is not in the house every day. When I think about her, I have a nice feeling in my body. I think that I love this woman. I think that she is my girlfriend and I am her boyfriend. But our love is complicated. We can't live together. It is very sad. Sometimes I fish with the captain or his friends. A young boy helps us. We use a small boat when we fish. One morning when we fish, we are lost. Fog is around our boat. We see nothing. We can't go home. The next day, the fog is away. We can go home. When we are back home, the captain says, Use a bigger boat. The bigger boat is better for long journeys. One day, the captain tells me, Put more food and drinks on the boat. Bring some guns, too. The captain wants to fish with his friends. I prepare the boat. I put food and guns on the ship, but the captain's friends don't want to fish. 
Then the captain tells me, prepare the boat for usual fishing for the next day. This is my chance. I can run away. A lot of food and guns are on the boat. I prepare the boat for fishing, but I leave the food and guns on the boat. Tomorrow I can run away. This is my plan. I think about the young woman. I want to take her with me, but I don't know how to do it. It is not possible to take her on the boat. I am sad. I don't know what to do. I want to be free. But my heart wants to be with her. It is the morning. I meet the young woman in the house. She is so beautiful. I look at her. She knows that something is different. Maybe she understands that this is our last moment together. She looks in my eyes. She touches my hand. I think that she understands. Her face is sad. My face is sad, too. She smiles at me. Then she goes away. This is our last moment together. One hour later, we are ready. I and the boy go to the boat. One man goes with us. He is our boss for today. Soon we are far from the land, but we can't catch fish. Then we go very far from the land. Our boss thinks that we can catch fish there. At one moment, our boss goes to the front of the boat. I quickly push him to the sea. He wants to swim back. I take a gun. When he sees the gun, he swims away. When he is away, I look at the boy. I want to know if he is on my side. I see that he is on my side. After two years, I am free. We go very fast. The wind is good. The next day, we are far from the pirate land. But we don't stop. We continue. After six days, we must stop. We need some fresh water. We wait for the night. Then we go to the land. When we are near the land, we hear horrible noises. The boy doesn't want to continue. He is scared. We stay on the boat near the land, but we can't sleep. Some animals come to wash in the water. The animals make horrible noises. The boy is very scared. Then we hear that one animal swims to us. The boy wants to go away, but I don't want to go away. I take one gun. I shoot at the animal. The animal turns. Then the animal swims to the land. The other animals hear the gun. They go away, too. We stay on the boat. It is morning. We eat bread for breakfast. The boy wants to go to the beach. I go with him. We take guns. We take big bottles for water. I don't go very far. I want to see the boat. The boy continues alone. The boy returns after some time. He runs. I think that some animal runs after him. But I see nothing dangerous. He has an animal in his hand. The animal is a chicken. He is very happy. I am happy too. We have good meat and fresh water. We don't see dangerous animals. I don't know where we are. I only know that we are near Africa. I think that we are near a land where no people live. We don't see people on the land. We only hear animals. One day when we go for fresh water, we see a lion. The lion sleeps on the beach. He is very big. He is only 20 meters from us. The boy is scared. Then 
the lion opens his eyes. When the lion sees us, he runs to us. We don't have much time. I must shoot at the lion. I have three guns. The first bullet hits his leg. The second bullet hits his head. The third bullet finishes the animal. We can't eat the meat. The meat is not good. But we take the skin. We put the skin on the boat. The skin is dry soon. We continue our journey. We stop only when we need fresh water. Soon, we see that people live on the land. One day, we see a big group of people. They are on the beach. They have many children. They watch us. I want to stop. I want to go to the people. But the boy doesn't like this idea. He is scared. The people want to give us some food. Two people run to the forest. They return with some food. We don't want to go to the beach. But they don't want to swim to us. We don't know how to take the food. The people see this. They put the food on the ground. Then they go back. When they are far from the food, we go to the food. Now we are not scared of the people. They come to us. We thank the people. But we have nothing for the people. At that moment, we see two animals. The animals run down from the hill. The people are scared. One animal attacks a young girl. I shoot at the animal. I kill the animal. The second animal is scared. The animal runs away. The people are shocked when they hear the gun. They are also shocked when they see that the animal is dead. The people are happy that the girl is alive. They thank us. They give us more food and water. Now, we have a lot of food and water on the boat. We continue our journey the next day, we see some islands. I think that we can visit the islands. But at that moment, the boy starts to shout. He starts to shout because he sees a ship. The boy is really scared. He thinks that it is a pirate ship. But I look at the ship. I see that the ship is Portuguese. But nobody on the ship sees us. So I shoot from a gun. They hear the gun. They see us. Soon, we are on the Portuguese ship. They speak Portuguese, Spanish, and French. But I don't understand the men. But one Scottish sailor is on the ship. He comes to me. I tell him our story. Then all the sailors are very nice. We can stay on the ship. We are very happy. We offer our boat to the captain. But the captain doesn't want to take the boat. He wants to pay for the boat. It is very nice. I tell him that he can buy our boat. I give him a good price. It is a half of usual price. The captain agrees. The captain also wants to train the boy as a sailor. I don't like this idea. I think that the boy is very young for this job. I think that the boy also needs freedom. But the captain says that it is good for the boy. The boy wants to work for the captain, so the boy starts to be a sailor. The ship is on the way to Brazil. We come to Brazil after 20 days. I say goodbye to the boy and the sailors. Brazil is a new state in South America. Many people start a new life here. It is the same for me. I know nobody here. I meet some people. They have sugar plantations. Soon, we are good friends. I like Brazil very much. Soon, I learn the language. I have some money from the captain. 
I buy a small land in Brazil. I start to produce sugar. I don't produce much at the beginning. But after two years, my plantation is big. I am single. But my life is good. My financial situation is better every month. After three years in Brazil, I have enough money. I can have a woman for cleaning my house. I ask my friends if they know a good woman. One friend says, I have a daughter. She is 18 years uh, old. I think that she can work for you. She is also a very good cook. The next day, his daughter comes to my house. She is friendly, but she is shy. She is also a very pretty girl. We talk. I tell her what I need. The next day, she comes to my house. She cleans the dirty floor. She cleans my furniture. She comes to my house every morning on Monday and on Thursday. She works for four hours. She also cooks for me. She also gives food to my cat. I am always happy when I see the girl. Sometimes we have breakfast or lunch together and we talk. Then she is ill. She can't come to my house. I feel a strange feeling when she is not in my house. I miss her. I think, maybe, I love her. One week later, she comes to my house. I am happy when I see her. I see that she is happy too. I hug her. Then I kiss her. It is a long kiss. Two weeks later, I go to her father's house. I ask him if I can marry his daughter. He is quiet. I wait for his answer. Then he says, I agree. I am very happy. Two months later, I marry the daughter of my friend. We start to plan a family. This part of my life is great. We have big plans for our family. We have big plans for our plantation. We need a bigger house. We need more money for a bigger house. I think about the business in Africa. I can make a lot of money in Africa fast. I speak about Africa with my friends very often. I tell my friends that we can make a lot of money in Africa. One day, three friends come to our house. They tell me that they want to go to Africa. They ask me if I want to go with them. I say, yes, I want to go with you. We start to prepare for the journey. Soon, we are ready. I say goodbye to my wife. Then we go. We want to come back two months later. We leave Brazil in September. Our ship is very big. But we are only 17 men. The ship is full of things for business. The weather is good, but very hot at the beginning. One week later, we see a hurricane. The hurricane is very strong. Our ship is in danger. The hurricane is finished after three days. But when the hurricane is away, we have a problem. The ship is broken. We can't go to Africa. The captain wants to go back and repair the ship. But I don't want to go back. We talk about it. We think about the best solution. Then in the evening, a second hurricane comes. The wind is strong. The waves are very big. Then one man shouts, Land! When the man shouts, Land! The ship stops. The sea is not deep enough. It is bad for our broken ship. The ship can break every second. We must go on a smaller boat. 
this is very dangerous because the boat is very small for 17 men, but we must do it if we want to survive. So we go on a small boat. The waves are very big. The wind is very strong. The wind pushes us to big rocks. We know that the crash is near. Then a big wave comes. The wave turns the boat. I am underwater. I can't breathe. I don't see the other men. I don't see the boat. Then my head is above water. It is only a short moment. But I can breathe. I see a small beach between the rocks. A big wave pushes me to the beach. I am still in water. But I feel a land under my feet. I know that I must stand up. I must get out of the water. The next wave can take me back to sea, but my body is weak. I can't stand up fast. The next wave comes. I am underwater again. I can't breathe again. But then another wave takes me back on the beach. I am in water, but I can stand up. I can go 10 meters. I am on the sand. I am safe. But my arms and legs are very weak. I collapse, and I lie on the beach. After some time, I stand up. I look for the other men. I can't find the other men. I am the only man alive. All my friends are dead. I only find three hats and two shoes on the beach. It is horrible for me. The weather is still very bad, but the waves are not so big. I see the ship. The ship is far from the land. I look around. I see that I have nothing. I am wet. I have no other clothes. I have nothing to eat or drink. I have no gun. Dangerous animals can eat me. I have only a small knife, which I find in my pocket. This situation is really bad. How can I survive with only a small knife? I need to drink some fresh water. I find a small river. I drink the water. The night comes. I am scared of dangerous animals. I can't sleep on the ground. So I spend the night in a big tree. When I wake up the next morning, the sea is calm. I still see the ship. I swim to the ship. I don't see a way inside the big ship. I swim around the ship twice. Then I see a rope on one side of the ship. I use the rope. Now I am on the ship. The ship is empty. I try to find some food. I am lucky. Some food on the ship is dry. I also find a bottle of rum. I take the bottle with me. Then I hear something. Somebody is on the ship. Who is it? Somebody from my friends? It is not possible. My friends are all dead. I am scared. I go to the place where I hear the noises. Then I see who it is. It is a dog. It is a dog of our captain. Now I have a friend. I am not alone. I must take the food, rum, and the dog to the beach, but I don't have a small boat on the ship. I must make a raft. I find some wood. I make a raft from the wood. I also need some clothes. I look for the clothes. When I look for the clothes, I find a nice carpet. I also find four guns and a box with gunpowder. I put everything on my raft. The sea is calm. The wind goes to the land. This is all good. Soon I am on the beach. I look for a place where I can stay. I see a hill. From the hill, I can see where I am. I take a gun. I walk to the hill. I go to the top. 
I see sea around the whole place. I am on an island. I see two small islands near. One is to the north, one is to the west. I also see a big land to the south. The land is about 100 kilometers far. I see nothing to the east. I see only the ocean. I don't see people on the island. I see only wild animals. I see many birds on the way back from the hill, but I don't know their names. I don't know if I can eat them. I kill one bird, but the meat isn't good. I go back to the raft. The next day, I want to go back to the ship. I want to take all important things to the island. The next storm can destroy the ship completely. I make a small tent near the beach. I bring the things which can be destroyed by rain to the tent. The night comes. I lie on the ground. I put two guns near my left shoulder. I also put two guns near my right shoulder. Now I feel safe. I am tired. I sleep very soon. I swim back to the ship the next day. I make a second raft. I put many things on the raft. I am very happy when I find seven new guns and some beds. I take all these things to the beach. I go to the ship every day. I bring back many good things. For example, I find a lot of candles. I need candles on the island. I also find two big boxes of tea. I make a lot of visits to the ship. One day I discover a box which is closed. Under the box I find a key. When I open the box I see some money from Europe and Brazil. Money is not important on the island, but I take the money with me. I also find cards with pictures. They are pictures of the king and the queen. I can play some games. I can have some fun with the cards. The next day, big dark clouds are in the sky. They are bigger and bigger. The wind is stronger and stronger. I visit the ship, but I don't make a raft because a storm is near. Rafts can break easily in a storm. I swim back to the beach. The wind is really strong at night. But I am safe inside my little tent. The ship is gone the next morning. I know that I can stay on the island very long. I want to make a nice place where I can live. I also need to be safe. I can look for a cave or I can make a bigger tent. Maybe I can do both. I need a place which is near fresh water. The place must be in shadow. It must be easy to protect the place. I also need a view of the sea. I want to see ships. I find a nice place next to a big hill. I put my tent there. The hill protects me from one side. I build a fence on all the other sides. The fence has no door. I use a ladder when I go over the fence. I take all my things inside. I have more plans in my head. I make two tents. One tent is big. The second tent is small. The smaller tent is inside the bigger tent. The bigger tent protects the gunpowder and the food from rains. I live in the smaller tent. When the tents are finished, I start to make a cave at the bottom of the hill. I want to use the cave for food. I bring stones and earth from the cave to the fence. I make a terrace on the inside of the fence. I still work on the cave when a storm comes one day. I see lightning during the storm. I think that the lightning can hit my boxes with gunpowder. The explosion can destroy everything. The explosion can also kill me. 
I am scared. I need to make a change. After the storm, I open the boxes with the gunpowder. I put the gunpowder in smaller boxes and bags. I hide the boxes and bags in the rocks. I have a lot of gunpowder, so this takes three days. I also hunt every day. It is a break from the hard work. And I also need some meat. When I hunt, I also start to know the island more. I discover some goats, I hunt them. Now I have enough meat. I am sad sometimes. I think about my wife. I miss her very much. I think about my friends in Brazil. I think about my parents. I know that traveling by sea can change your life completely. Traveling can be great. The traveling can be horrible too. I know that my friends from the ship are dead. I know that I am the only person alive. I am lucky. I am also lucky because I have all the things like food, guns, and clothes. I can't survive without these things. I decide to make a big cross. I put the cross on the beach. I write on the cross the date of my first day on the island. I want to keep information about time. The cross is my calendar. I make a small cut in the cross every day. Every Sunday, the cut is longer. This cut shows the end of the week. The last day of every month is also a long cut. One day, I think about my situation. I have negative thoughts. This is not good. I want to change my negative thoughts. I decide to write all good and bad things. First, I write what is bad. I am alone on this island. I have nobody for a conversation. I have only a small chance that I can see England again. But I am alive. I am safe. I have my freedom. I have enough food. This is all positive. I don't have good clothes, but I don't need a lot of clothes on this island. I have my dog. He understands some words. He understands when I say, sit down. Come here. Bring it. Don't jump. Don't do it. I see that my situation is not perfect, but I have also some good things in my life. I need to concentrate on positive things only. I continue to make my place better and better. I make the cave bigger. I have space for many things in the cave. I am happy because my life is now well organized. I need to make some furniture. I need a chair and a table. I use the wood for my rafts in the ship. It takes five days to make them. Then I make more furniture for the cave. I put my clothes and guns in the cave too. I am very happy when my work is finished. The cave is comfortable now. Everything is well organized. I can easily find what I need. I decide to write a book about my life on the island. I describe my days in the book. I start with my first day on the island. I write everything what I remember. I also write what I think. It is good when I write my thoughts on paper. When I start, I write one page every day. But when I get to the present, I write only one page every week. I write only important things. After some time on the island, my life is well organized. But my life is never boring. I have always some work. Every morning, I walk around the island. Then I work. I have lunch at noon. Then I'll sleep but not very long. Then I'll continue with my work. I relax or I write my book in the evening. I make my cave bigger and bigger. 
I want to have a big cave. The cave is my kitchen, living room, and sometimes a bedroom. When the cave is finished, a lot of earth falls from one side. I am not in the cave when it happens. If a lot of earth falls on me, I can die. I clean the cave. Then I decide to put long boards on the sides and also on the top. I don't want to have this axide in again. This work takes one week. In December, I continue with my work in my small camp. The weather isn't very good. It rains all days. But it is still warm, so I work inside. It is never cold on the island. It is good for me. At the end of December, I kill a goat. I also hurt another goat. Her leg is broken. The goat can't walk. I take the goat home. I help the goat. After two weeks, the goat is not scared. The goat eats from my hand. In January, I travel through the island. I find more goats in the center of the island. The animals are very shy. It is difficult to get close to them. I want to domesticate some goats. I only need a good opportunity for it. I have a plan. The next day, I return with my dog. I think that my dog can help me hunt. I tell my dog, sit down, wait, don't move. When the goats are between me and my dog, I hide behind a tree. Then I shout at my dog, come here. My dog runs to me and the goats too. I wait in my position behind the tree. When one goat runs close to me, I jump and I catch her leg. I hold her right leg. But then the goat kicks me with her left leg. She kicks me in my nose. It is a horrible pain. I can't hold the goat and the goat runs away. We are not successful. This is not the best method how to catch a goat. We have to find a better method. I tell my dog, let's go home, I need to relax. I work on my fence from January to March. It takes me a long time because I want to make the fence very strong. During this time, I find big birds on the island. Their homes aren't in the trees, they live in holes which are between rocks. It is easy to catch them. Their meat is great. I can also cook and eat their eggs. When I work on my fence, I find a small bag. I remember corn in the bag. But now I see only some leaves in the bag. I take the bag outside my camp. I empty the bag because I need the bag for gunpowder. This happens before the rains. A month later, I find some green leaves in that place. It is young corn. I am so happy. The corn grows near my home. It is fantastic. I can bake bread in the future. Something happens in March. I am inside my cave when pieces of earth fall from the top of the cave. I am scared. My work on the cave can be lost. I run outside the cave. I see that the ground starts to shake. It is an earthquake. I am shocked and scared. Some big stones fall from the hill. But I am lucky. They don't hit my tent. The earthquake is finished soon. But I don't want to go inside the cave. I am scared. I sit on the ground before my tent. I think... Maybe... It is dangerous to sleep in the cave. It is dangerous.
I like the fruit valley very much. The nature is beautiful here. I think maybe I can move here. But the beach is far from this place. I have to be close to the beach. I need to see a ship which can save me. I don't move to the fruit valley. But I decide to build a house here. I visit the valley very often. Step by step, I build a house here. The house is small. I make a double fence around the house. The house is protected like a castle. Again, I use a ladder when I want to go inside. And inside, I have stairs in one corner of the fence. I use the stairs when I go outside, and I use the ladder when I go inside. This activity takes the whole August and the beginning of September, that I enjoy it a lot. The fruit valley gives me so much energy. I feel so healthy and strong here. Sometimes when I am in the valley at night, I watch the moon and the stars. I think about my wife. I think about my family in England. I know that they see the same moon. They see the same stars. But we can't be together. I think about my family very often. I wish the best for them. I also think about all the people who see the moon. I think about the places where they live. I feel connected with them. Sometimes I feel connected with the whole universe. I also think about God. I have questions for God. I ask him, why am I on this island? Why am I still alive when my friends are all dead? I don't have answers to these questions, but I believe God. I believe that he knows what he is doing. It is the time when the rainy season starts. The rainy season continues until the middle of October. This is my first year on the island. When the rains end, I return to my valley house. I see that the fence is all green. New leaves are growing everywhere. This isn't only beautiful, it is also useful because it is really hard to see the house. The leaves create shadow. It is very nice to stay here. I want to make a fence from the same wood around my first house too. When the rainy season is finished, I put my corn in the ground. I have a bad feeling that something bad can happen. I only use a half of the corn. This is a good idea because no corn grows up. I put the second half of the corn in the ground before the next rainy season. This time, the corn grows up. Now, I have a small farm on the island. I see that the seasons on the island are different from England. The seasons are not spring, summer, autumn, and winter. We have two rainy and two dry seasons. With this information, I can now plan when to put corn in the ground. I make longer and longer trips around the island. I need a basket for these trips. With a basket, I can carry more food during my trips. I can also carry more fruit from the fruit valley. I cut branches from the tree, which I use for my fences. I use the branches for the basket. When I finish the basket, I decide to make a long trip around the island. I go through the fruit valley. After the valley, I find some fields. A lot of grass is on the fields. The fields are very flat. There are a lot of flowers on the fields. The flowers smell so good. Many insects fly around these flowers. I see some big butterflies. Their wings are 10 centimeters wide. I also see small trees around these fields. I find nuts on these trees. 
These nuts are different from nuts in England. They have a different shape. They are also more sweet than nuts in England. I discover some new animals on this side of the island. Wild cats live here. I also see many parrots and other interesting birds. I catch one parrot. I take the parrot with me. His body has many colors. I see red, green, orange, blue, pink, and yellow. This part of the island is very nice. More food is here. But I don't want to move here. My dog catches a young goat on the way back. I save the goat. I take the goat with me. I want to keep goats. Now I have another chance. I leave the goat in my valley house. I want to prepare some space for the goat in my first home. I am so tired from the trip. I relax the whole day. I make a cage for the parrot. I bring home the goat. The goat starts to be calm. I make a map of the whole island. I put these new places on the map. The time goes very fast. Soon it is September again. This is my second year on the island. I am less sad now. I accept my situation. I have many good things in my life. My days are similar. I hunt in the morning. I cook at noon. I relax in the afternoon when the sun is very strong. And I work in the evening. This is my typical day. I also teach my parrot how to say his name. His name is Paul. I have a problem with my corn in November and December. The wild goats want to eat the little plants. I don't want to lose my corn. So I quickly make a fence around the field with the corn. I make a gate in the fence. I put my dog inside the fence. He protects my corn at night. Soon. The plants are tall, but another danger comes. Birds start to eat the seeds. I shoot at the birds. They fly away. I must watch my field every day. I have my first corn at the end of December. It isn't a lot of corn. I don't want to eat the corn. I decide to keep all the seeds. My goal is to put the seeds in the ground and have more corn later. I need some pots for the seeds. I look for clay on the Iceland. I find some clay and I try to make a pot. I have no success at the beginning. But I try again and again. It is long lurk. But after two months of experiments, I make two pots. I put the pots in baskets. I put dry grass between the baskets and the pots. The dry grass and the baskets protect the pots very well. I continue to make small pots. Their quality is better and better. I also make long but not very high pots. I put seawater in them. When the water is gone, I have salt. One day I find a broken piece of a pot in the fire. The fire makes the piece very hard. It is like a stone. The piece is very red, too. I have an idea. I take one pot and I make a fire around the pot. The pot is very hard after two hours. I am happy with the result. I also need a tool with which I can make flour. I take a big piece of hard wood. I make a hole in the wood. I put the seeds in the hole. Then I take another piece of hardwood. I break the seeds in the hole with this second wood. The flour stays on the bottom of the hole. Now I want to bake bread. I have an idea. I mix the flour with water. Then I take two stones. I put the stones near the fire. When the stones are very hot, I put the bread between them. Now I have my first bread on the island. The bread is not perfect, but I like the bread a lot. It is my first bread after a long time. 
It is during my third year on the island. I think about traveling around the island by sea. I think that it is possible to make a canoe. I want to make a canoe from a big tree. I find one big tree. I cut the tree. I start to make a hole in it. But after some days, I start to think about something. I start to think how to get the canoe from the forest to the beach. I think about it because I am quite far from the beach. I see that it is a problem. I see a small hill between the forest and the beach. It is not possible to move the canoe over the hill. The canoe is very heavy for it. I am really angry. I have to leave the canoe in the forest. Many days of work are lost. I don't believe that I can make such a mistake. I have to plan my work better next time. After three years on the island, my clothes are already very old. I start to use the skins of the animals. I make a cap and other clothes from the skins. I also need an umbrella. I try to make an umbrella from the skins too. It is difficult at the beginning. It takes some time, but I am successful in the end. After three years, I am quite happy. I have everything what I need for my life. My life on the island continues for the next five years. During this time, I decide to make another canoe. The canoe is smaller. It isn't difficult to move it to the beach. The canoe is finished in June. I want to travel around the island in the canoe. I put food, water, and guns in the canoe. I am ready for the trip. The beginning of my trip isn't easy for me. I am in danger when my journey starts. I have to go around some rocks in the sea. When I want to go back to the land, I feel a strong current under the canoe. The current is taking me away from the island. The situation is horrible. I am scared. I can't survive in the open sea. I don't have enough food and water for a long journey. I fight very hard against the current for two hours. Then I am able to get close to my island. I can continue my trip around the island. Now, I know that I am stronger than the currents around the island. I feel good. I feel strong. Soon, I find a small river. I go up the river, but I get nowhere because soon the river is very narrow. Stones block the way. I can't continue. I leave the canoe where it is. I want to explore this part of the island. I am not far from the part of the island which I know. Soon I find the way to my house in the valley. I am very tired from the trip. Soon I sleep. Then I hear a voice. I wake up. The voice is saying my name. Robinson, where are you? Robinson, where are you? First, I am scared, but then I see my parrot pull. He sits on top of the fence. He knows these words from me, and he is saying these words with the same intonation as me. I am surprised when I see him here. I think, why isn't he at home? But I am happy when I see him. I don't go back to the canoe. I return home with the parrot. I don't make such a trip for a year. I stay in my house most of the time. I make more tools and pots. I can also make very nice baskets now. It is 11 years after my first day on the island. One day I see that I don't have much gunpowder. It starts to worry me. I need gunpowder if I want to hunt animals. My first goat is very 
old. I want meat, but I don't have the heart to kill her. One day she dies a natural death. With less and less gunpowder, I have to find another way how to get meat. I decide to make a trap. I am not successful at the beginning. But then I catch three young goats. They are one male and two females. I take them home with me. I keep the goats inside a small area. I make a fence around the area. But the area is too small for three goats, so I make a fence for them around a bigger area. It takes me three months to build this fence, but the area is very nice. There is a lot of grass and water for them. After some time, the young goats are very calm. Soon they eat from my hand. In two years, I have 12 goats inside my fence. And in three years, I have more than 20 goats. I have a lot of milk and meat thanks to this. I experiment a little. And after some time, I am able to make cheese and butter. My table is full now, and I have a lot of animals around me. I have my old dog, goats, and my parrot. The only thing which I still miss is somebody for a conversation. One day, I go to the part of the sea where the strong current is. On the way there, I think about how strange I look. I have a big hat, a short jacket, and short trousers. They are all made from animal skin. I don't have socks or shoes, but I put some goat skins around my feet. I have two belts. One belt is for the gun and knife, and one belt for the gunpowder. I also carry a basket on my back and an umbrella above my head. My beard is very long. I see that after 11 years on the island, I don't look like an Englishman. I am a different person. One day, I am walking on the beach. I am going to check my canoe. Then I see something surprising. I see a mark of a human foot on the sand. I look around, but I see nobody. I am scared. I run back to my house. I am so scared that it is difficult to sleep at night. Then I think, maybe it is all only my imagination. Or maybe it is the mark of my own foot and it is stupid to be scared. After this thought, I feel better. I leave my house. And I go look at the mark again. When I come to the mark of the foot, I see that the mark is much bigger than my foot. It's impossible that it's my foot. I'm scared again. I start to panic. I want to destroy my cornfields. I want to destroy my valley house. I need to hide my activity on the island. I'm so afraid that I can't sleep the whole night. Finally, I sleep a little in the morning. My heed is clear when I wake up. Now, it isn't so strange that people live on the islands around. I think maybe this is their first visit here. Maybe this island is not interesting for them. Maybe it's also their last visit here. I feel better after these thoughts. But I want to do something for my protection if the people come again. During the following month, I make another fence around my house. I make holes in the fence. Through these holes, I can easily shoot from guns if I'm attacked. Now. I have a house which is very well protected. Nobody can come easily near me. I also worry about my goats. 
I divide the goats in two groups. I built a smaller fence in another part of the island. I put one group of the goats there. It takes me a lot of time, but my animals are safe. After 16 years on the island, something very sad happens. My dog dies. I cry for three days. It's my worst day on the island. Fortunately, I have my goats. I go to them and I tell them how sad I am. They don't understand my words, but I feel that they understand me. They feel my emotions. They are unusually calm and quiet. It's now two years after the foot in the sand on the beach. One day, when I'm walking on the beach, I think that I see a canoe far in the sea. I'm not sure, so I continue to walk. Then I see a thing which shocks me. The beach is full of parts of human bodies. Heads, hands, feet, fingers and teeth are everywhere. There is a black place after a fire. I'm angry, but also scared. I can't look at this horrible scene for a long time. I have a horrible feeling in my stomach. I go back home and I think about what to do. Now, I can't go out to sea with my canoe. I have no chance against a group of cannibals in the open sea. I also can't use guns because the sound of a gun is very loud. But I always have guns with me for protection. I think that maybe in the future I can kill some cannibals. And I can save their prisoners. I look for a place near the beach where I can hide and prepare for the attack. Then I change my opinion. I think that it's not good to fight the cannibals. I don't know these people. They don't attack me. Maybe it isn't good to attack them. Finally, I stop the preparations for the attack. I decide to attack them only if they attack me first. I'm hiding my activity on the island. I'm very careful. I try not to be loud. I'm worried when I make a fire but I need fire because I need to cook. So when I make a fire, I try to make only little smoke. Smoke can go very high. People can see smoke from a big distance. One day I discover a small cave in the forest. The cave is near the beach. I go inside. When my eyes are okay with the dark, I see two eyes. The eyes are looking at me. I jump outside. I'm scared to death. I wait, but nothing happens. I go slowly to the beginning of the cave and I listen. I hear something. It hears some animal. I think that the animal is injured. I take my gun and I go in the cave slowly. When my eyes can see again, I see an old goat. The goat is dying in the cave. I return to the cave the next day. I see that the goat is dead. I look around the place. I see that the place is very safe. It's a good place near the beach where I can hide. So I bring some guns and some gunpowder there. It's 23 years after my first moment on this island. I live comfortably now. I have many animals around me. Pole is repeating my name and some other words very nicely. I have two other parrots. I teach them how to say my name. I have more than 30 goats. One day, I'm walking to my fields in the morning when I see fire on the beach. 
I quickly return to my house. I prepare all my guns. I take my telescope. I go close to the beach. I hide behind a tree. I watch what is happening on the beach. I see nine naked people. I have two canoes. And they are leaving. When they leave, I go to the beach. The beach is full of blood and bones again. I'm angry again. I decide to kill them if I see them again. But they don't return for a long time. One day in the evening after a big storm, something strange happens. I hear the sound of a gun at sea. I go to the beach. I see a light. The light is coming from the sea, but it's very far. Then I hear the gun again. I know that some ship is near my island. The ship is in danger. The ship is asking for help. But it's very dark. I don't see the whole ship. I take a lot of dry wood. I make a big fire on the beach. The men on the ship probably see the fire because they shoot again. I think, I can speak to somebody tonight. This is great. I keep the fire until midnight, but nobody comes to my beach. It's very strange. I don't understand it. I think, where are the men from the ship? The next day in the morning, I see the ship. The ship stops very far from the beach. The ship looks empty. I don't understand it. I expect the people from the ship. I really want to speak with somebody. I miss communication with real people very much. I take my canoe. I go to the ship. I want to see if somebody is alive. The ship looks Spanish. The ship is completely destroyed. When I'm close to the ship, I see a dog. He is very happy when he sees me. I give him bread and I give him water. He is hungry and very thirsty. I find nobody on the ship. Where are the men from the ship? I think. It's very strange. I don't have an answer to this question. It's a mystery. There are many boxes with different things on the ship. Some boxes are small, some boxes are big. I find bottles with alcohol in some big boxes. But these boxes are too heavy. I can't take them on the canoe. I find guns and gunpowder. I take them to the canoe. I also find some other useful things. I return to the island in the evening with some small boxes on my canoe. I have some new shirts and also gold, silver, and a lot of gunpowder. The gunpowder is important for me. On the island, gunpowder is more useful than money or gold. There is something else what I need very much. I need shoes. I find two pairs of shoes on board the ship. I take them with me. I put all my new things in the cave. I make five trips to the ship. I take everything useful for me. Then I hide the canoe. Everything goes back to normal. Time goes quickly. I often think about the men from the ship and the cannibals on the beach. One night in March, I have an interesting dream. In the dream, I see two canoes with cannibals who come to the beach. One of their prisoners runs away. He comes to my house. I save him. Then he becomes my friend. He helps me go through the dangerous waters around the island. I wake up, but the dream stays in my mind. I believe that if somebody helps me, it's possible to get away from the island. Maybe I can save one of the prisoners of the cannibals. I decide to watch the beach more. I go every day around the beach for the next two years. I hope to see the canoes.
My wish becomes reality one afternoon. I see five canoes with more than 30 men on the beach. I can't attack so many men. I have to wait. I watch them with my telescope. The visitors make a fire. They dance around the fire. I also see two other men. They are tied. They are prisoners. After some time, the cannibals take one tied man to the fire. They kill the man. The cannibals paint their bodies with his blood. It's like a theater. But this isn't a theater. It's real. It's horrible. But I can do nothing. There are too many cannibals. The second man is waiting on the side. When the cannibals don't look, the second man jumps up. And he starts to run away. He is running in my direction. I run to the beach and I hide behind the tree. I see that only two cannibals run after him. This is the right moment to save the prisoner. The man runs fast, but the cannibals are faster. They are closer and closer to him. I prepare two guns and I'm waiting behind the tree. The prisoner is running directly to my tree, but he doesn't see me. I don't move. Then he runs around me. I'm still behind the tree. When the first cannibal runs close to me, I jump from behind the tree. He is shocked. I shoot him. The second cannibal sees this. He tries to shoot an arrow at me. I have to shoot him too. The prisoner stops when he hears the gun. He turns. He is scared. I smile at him. I show him that it's okay to come closer. He comes to me. He goes down to his knees. He puts his head on the ground. Then he takes my foot. He puts my foot on his head. I show him that he can stand up. He stands up. He looks at the dead cannibals. He goes to their bodies. He looks at the holes in their bodies. He probably can't understand why the cannibals are dead. It's unbelievable for him. He takes the arrows from the dead men. We take the bodies of the cannibals. We hide the bodies in the forest near. Then we go to the deeper forest. I take the man to my cave. The cave is my secret. Nobody can find us there. I give him bread, meat, and some water. He is very tired. He sleeps immediately. I have an opportunity to look at him. I see that he is young, slim, but very strong. I think that he is about 25 years old. He has long black hair, dark skin, and a pleasant face. I let him sleep and I go outside. I sit near the cave and I watch the space around the cave. Some cannibalists can come and look for us, but they don't come. Three hours later, the man comes out of the cave. He shows me how happy he is that he is alive and safe. I speak to him. I give him a name. His name is Friday because it's Friday today. I tell him my name and I teach him yes and no. We stay in the cave at night. The next day, we go on top of the hill. I see through my telescope that the canoes are gone. We are alone on the island. We go carefully to the beach. First, we go to the place with the bodies of the dead cannibals. When we find them, Friday wants to eat them. I'm angry. I show to Friday that it's not good to eat them. Here I understand that Friday is also a cannibal. We bury the cannibals. Then we walk to the beach. What we see is horrible. There are human bones on the sand. The sand is red with blood. We collect all the body parts. We prepare a big fire. I want to burn the body parts in the fire. 
We go to my house. I make a little tent for Friday. The tent is between the two fences, which are around my house. I'm a little scared. I don't know if Friday can hurt me. After some time, I see that I don't have to be scared. Friday is a very good man. He is like a son, and I'm like a father for him. In many situations laden, he shows me that he wants to give his life for me. I'm very happy that I have Friday on the island. I begin to teach him. I teach him what he needs to know about life like a European. First, I teach him some new words. I start with hi, hello, bye, thank you. It isn't easy at the beginning, but I'm patient. I'm happy that I can speak to somebody. I'm happy that Friday is on the island. I want to show him what I eat. I shoot a young goat. Friday is scared of the gun. He doesn't understand how such a small thing can kill a goat. He doesn't want to touch the gun. We make a soup. When I cook the soup, Friday goes to the forest and he brings some herb. He puts the herb in the soup. The herb is similar to pepper. The soup smells fantastic. The soup tastes fantastic too. The next day, we cook goat meat with sauce. Again, Friday brings some herbs and also plants. The herbs make this sauce taste great. We make a nice salad from the plants. I teach Friday how to prepare corn and bake bread. Soon, he can bake very good bread. Then, we make my field bigger because we want to have more corn. In all activities, Friday helps me a lot. He can also catch fish very well. Our cooperation is simply great. We are a good team. I want to teach Friday English. I want to teach him fast. I want to be a good teacher. I take my role very seriously. I think about the best method how to teach Friday English. When I speak fast, Friday doesn't understand. So I try to speak slowly. I also speak only in the present. And I use simple words. I also say only short sentences. Now Friday understands more. We speak about many topics. When Friday doesn't understand something, I point at it. Or I explain the word to him. If it doesn't help, I make a picture in the sand. Soon, Friday starts to understand many sentences in the present. He also starts to use some words. His pronunciation is very bad at the beginning, but it isn't important for me. I understand him, and I'm very happy that somebody speaks to me. Friday is a good student. He is clever. He improves quickly. Soon he can say some words like an Englishman. Of course, not all words, but the words which he says correctly make me very happy. I see that Friday very often repeats aloud what I say. I think that it also helps him to learn so fast. I think learning a language is quite easy. You only need to copy what you hear, and if you don't understand something, you need a picture. Then you need a lot of practice. This is the best system. Friday's progress is fast. He is able to talk more and more every day. In a couple of months, we can have a nice conversation. Friday likes my tools. They are very interesting for him. He especially likes the telescope. He borrows the telescope very often. He goes to one hill and he watches everything around. One day, we speak about Friday's people and why they have enemies. He says, there is a war between two groups of local people. We are neighbors, but we don't like each other. 
We have many conflicts. There is never peace. We kill each other whenever we can. Friday tells me that they eat human meat like their enemies. They also do rituals when they catch their enemies. Friday tells me about the sea and the currents in the sea. Thanks to Friday, I know more about the history, culture, and traditions of his people. I tell Friday my story. I describe England and Europe to him. I tell him about our cities, schools, ships, and traveling around the world. I tell him that education is important in Europe and that we study from books. It's all new to him. Friday's people don't need schools on the islands. They have all what they need for their life. When I feel that I can trust him enough, I show him how gunpowder works. I teach him how to use a gun. I give him a knife and a belt. He is happy with my presence. He says that it's not the first time when he sees such a knife. He says that some white men live with them on their island. He counts 17 Europeans. I think that these men can be the sailors from the Spanish ship. Friday tells me that they are okay. And happy when I hear that some Europeans live not very far from my island. I start to plan how to meet them. The next day, we go on a small trip around the island. First, we go to the cross where I want to mark another day. What is it? asks Friday when we come to the cross. I explain that we have seven days in a week. These days are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. When Friday hears the word Friday, he laughs. I explain to him why his name is Friday. Now he fully understands the meaning of his name. During the walk, Friday tells me, If we build a canoe, we can go to my island. I take Friday to the other side of the island. I show him my canoe there. But he says, This canoe is too small for two people. We have to make a bigger canoe. So we start to make a bigger canoe. We have to cut a big tree, and I show him how to cut the inside of the tree. It takes us a month to make the canoe, and it takes us two days to move the canoe to the beach. The canoe is ready, and we are ready too. The day before we want to go, Friday goes to the beach. He comes back very quickly. He looks very scared. He says that there are three canoes on the beach. He is scared because he thinks that the cannibals are here because they want to find him. I tell him, don't worry, we are strong, and maybe they don't come for you today. Let's wait and watch. We take 15 guns. We go on top of a hill. We see 14 cannibals, two prisoners, and three canoes on the beach. They stop close to the place where the forest is near the beach. It's good because it's easier to attack them and save the prisoners. We go to them quietly through the forest. I think about my right to kill them. I have no reason to shoot so many people who do nothing wrong to me. After some thinking, I decide only to watch and attack them only if it's necessary. When we are very close to the beach, we see that the cannibals are around the fire. They start to eat the first prisoner. The second prisoner is still alive. He isn't one of Friday's people. He is European. The cannibals want to eat him too. I decide to save him if it's possible.
We move closer to the cannibals, but we are still hidden behind the trees. Twelve cannibals are still around the fire, but two cannibals go for the white man. When I see this, I prepare the guns. I ask Friday if he can do the same. Then we shoot quickly at the cannibals from six guns. We kill three and seriously injure two. Of the cannibals, the other cannibals jump up. But they don't know where to run. They don't know from which direction the danger comes. Some run to their canoes. Some stay on the beach. We continue to shoot. We shoot three other cannibals. After that, we take our guns and we run to the beach. We shout very loud. I run to the prisoner and Friday shoots another cannibal who is near. I free the European. He says something in Spanish to me. I give him a gun. He is weak, but he can shoot. The cannibals are shocked by our quick attack. Our unusual guns scare them a lot. Only two cannibals try to fight us. We shoot them with our guns. Friday fights very well. He quickly kills one cannibal who is injured. The second injured cannibal runs to the forest. Friday runs after him and he kills him with his knife. Only three cannibals are able to run away. They jump in their canoe and they start to leave. Friday shoots at them, but he doesn't hit them. It's dangerous to let them go because they can tell their people about us. We want to jump in one canoe and we want to follow them. But to our surprise, we find another man on the bottom of the canoe. He is scared. He doesn't see the fight. He only hears the fight. Ropes are around his neck. He is in great pain. It's difficult for him to breathe. I quickly cut the ropes. When Friday sees him, he starts to cry. Then he laughs and he hugs the man. Then he jumps and begins to dance around him. Then he cries and laughs at the same time. When the strongest emotions are gone, Friday tells me that the prisoner is his father. I feel tears in my eyes when I see the son's love for his father. This happy incident delays us and the cannibals are already gone. Friday massages his father's hands and feet. The massage helps him. It brings more blood to the hands and feet. Soon his father feels much better. When they talk, Friday suddenly jumps up. He runs to the forest very fast. When he comes back, he has a bottle full of fresh water. He gives the water to his father, who is extremely thirsty. After he drinks, I ask Friday to give the rest of the water to the Spanish. He needs water very much, too. The Spanish thanks me a lot. He has problems to walk. He is very weak. I ask Friday to massage his feet too. It helps him. Then I want to help the Spanish go to the canoe because it's very difficult for him to walk. We want to take our new guests to our house, but Friday is young and strong. He has a lot of power. He takes the Spanish on his back and carries him to the canoe. He carefully puts him inside the canoe. When the Spanish is inside the canoe, Friday jumps out of the canoe. He pushes the canoe along the beach. Soon, we reach the place near our house. Friday helps our new guests out of the canoe. But they aren't able to walk. We have to carry them to our home. We have another problem when we reach our house. Friday's father and the Spanish can't go over the fence. 
I think about the solution. First, I want to pull them over the fence, but the cannibals are already gone. There is no danger from them now. So we can stay outside the fence. We make a tent for them outside the fence. We prepare soft beds for them too. When we finish this, I start to cook dinner. Friday brings some fish and we cook them quickly. We have dinner together in the tent. Friday translates for me because the Spanish can speak Friday's language. After the dinner, Friday goes back to the beach. He brings back all the weapons. The next day, we bury the bodies of the killed cannibals. It's a lot of work. I speak with Friday's father the next morning. I want to know what he thinks about the cannibals. I ask, can they return? Can they attack us? He says, no, they can't attack us. They are scared of the guns. They think that you and Friday are spirits sent from heaven. I'm still worried that the cannibals can return, but they never return. When our guests are strong enough, I begin to think about the journey by sea again. I ask the Spanish why he is on these islands. He says that he is from the Spanish ship. He says that there are 16 Europeans on Friday's island. They are Spanish and Portuguese. They want to go home, but they can't build a ship because they have no tools. I show the Spanish the tools which I have from the ship. He says that with my tools, it's possible to build a ship. I think that the Spanish and Friday's father can return to their island. They can tell other Europeans about my tools. Together, we can build a ship. Then we can go to Brazil or Havana or maybe Europe. But the Spanish wants something else. He says it's be better if we wait for some time. There isn't enough food for 16 other men on the island. We need more food to eat when we build the ship. I agree with him. He and Friday's father help us expand the fences and fields. We catch more goats. Now we have 50 goats. We collect a lot of fruit. Then we dry the fruit. We also prepare the materials for the ship. I choose some trees. I show the others how to cut the trees. Then we make long and thin pieces. Soon we have a lot of food. We have a lot of corn. We need more baskets and pots for the corn. The Spanish knows how to make baskets. He has a great talent. His baskets are excellent. He uses a special technique when he makes baskets. The technique is fast and effective. He makes the baskets three times faster than me. I want to learn his technique. He teaches me. I'm not as fast as the Spanish, but I'm faster than before. We put all the food in my cave. The food is safe there. The Spanish and Friday's father can go back. They can bring the other men here. We give them food and four guns in case the cannibals want to attack them again. Then they take the canoe and they go away. Two days pass when something unusual happens. Friday wakes me up at six in the morning. Are they here? I ask. Friday, he says. No, but somebody else is here. There is a boat at sea. I go to the top of the nearest hill. I see the boat. It's clear that these people are not the friends from Friday's Island. The boat comes from a different direction. I also see a ship. I know this shape. The ship is English. I'm confused. It's true that I am happy 
when I see Englishmen after 27 years on the Eastland. But I'm also worried. The Eastland isn't mere ways of English ships. I don't remember any storm yesterday. So why are they here? Maybe the men are pirates. Maybe they want to hide something on the island. I decide to be very careful. Friday and I stay in the forest and we watch then. The boat comes to the beach and I count 11 men. Soon I see that they are all Englishmen. Three men have hands tied together. The eight other men take them to the beach. Two prisoners are calm, but the third prisoner tries to say something. He looks very scared. He asks the men in the boat for something. When Friday sees this, he turns to me and he tells me that Englishmen also eat people. I tell him that they definitely don't plan to eat them. I think that they want to shoot them. After some time, we see that this isn't their plan. The men from the boat start to explore the island. The three tied prisoners sit on the beach with two men as guards. The prisoners look very sad. Their situation is bad. Low tide comes soon. The level of the sea is low. Their boat is on the sand. They can't move the boat. I hear them say, we have to wait and leave with the next high tide. This give us some hours. Friday and I stay in the forest until dark. Then I see that the men who stand the guard start to sleep. The three prisoners sit under a tree quite close to us. It looks like they are also quite far from the other sailors. We can come closer to them. When we are very close to them, I speak quietly to them. We are still behind the trees and they can't see us. When they hear my voice, they can't believe that somebody speaks English to them from the dark forest. What is that? asks one of the men. I hear something. I hear a tree speak, answers the other. But it's impossible. A tree can't speak English. Yes, you hear something, but it's not a tree, I say quietly. My name is Robinson Crusoe. I'm an Englishman. I live on this island. I can help you if you tell me who you are. After the first shocking moment, one man answers my question. He is the captain of the ship. But after a rebellion on the ship, the captain, his assistant, and a passenger are prisoners. The other sailors want to leave them on the island. The captain says, The truth is that there are only two dangerous sailors who control the others in the group. Eighty percent of them are still loyal to me. If the leaders are caught, the rest can return under my control. I say, I can help you, but I have one condition. I want full control over the ship if we manage to get the ship back. The captain and the other two prisoners agree. They give me full control over the ship and over their lives. We free the prisoners. Then we go back to the forest. I give them guns and we start to plan the attack. In the middle of our conversation, we see that the sailors who stand guard wake up. They stand up. They shout to three other men who are near to them. At that moment, we shoot the guards. Then the captain speaks to the three other men. He doesn't want to shoot them, but they must be loyal to him and help him get the ship back, they agree. We tie them and leave them on the beach. The other three men who hear the shots come back. They see that the situation is changed. 
We are five. We have a lot of guns. The situation is bad for them. They also say that they want to be loyal to the captain. We tie these men, too. We hide our six prisoners in the forest. Then I and the captain have finally time to talk to each other. I tell him my story, and he is shocked. He also thanks me a lot for my help. He and his two friends are hungry, so we go to my house. I show them the results of my work. During all the years on the island, they are surprised when they see what I have. But we don't have much time to explore my home. We have to plan how to get the ship back. There are 16 men on board, and we are only five. First, we decide to take everything out of the boat. We think that the sailors can send another boat to the island if the men from the first boat don't come back with the next high tide. In the morning, we hear a gun. It's a signal from the ship. After some time, we hear the gun again and again. There is no answer. Then we see that the sailors take another boat and go to the beach. We see eight men. They all have guns. The captain tells me that six men are still loyal to him. But there is also the man who is the leader of the rebellion. The captain thinks that it's difficult to beat them. But I tell him that we have a good chance to win. But we have to do something quickly. The captain trusts two of our prisoners. They promise to fight on our side. We give them weapons. We are seven men ready to fight. We wait for the arrival of the boat. When the boat reaches the beach, the men jump out of the boat. They pull the boat on the beach, then they run to the other boat. They are surprised when they see the boat empty. They call their friends. They shout. Then they shoot in the air, but it's all useless. Nobody shouts back. The sailors are confused. They don't understand the situation. They start to put the boat in the water again. It looks like they want to go back to the ship to tell the others that there is a problem. When the captain sees this, he is afraid that they can go back to the ship and leave the island forever. But ten seconds later, the sailors change their plan. Now, they leave three men in the boat. The other five men go to the forest to look for their friends. We continue to watch all the actions of both groups. The five men in the forest sit down under a tree. They discuss what to do. They argue a little. After a long conversation under the tree, they get up. Then they walk to the beach. Maybe they don't want to look for friends. We have to do something quickly. We can't let them go back to the boat. I have a plan. I tell the assistant to go more to the center of the island. Friday goes with him. Then they shout at the sailors. When the sailors hear this, they shout back. Then they go in the direction of the voice. Friday and the assistant continue to shout back. They take the sailors to the opposite side of the island. This strategy works very well. The five men are seen very far from the beach. This is very good for us. We go to the three men in the boat. We explain the situation to them. They decide not to fight us. They become our prisoners, too. After some time, Friday and the assistant return. The sailors are very far from the beach. The sailors can't return soon. We hide and we wait for them. When the sailors return, they are very tired. First, they go to the boat. They are surprised when they don't find the three men. They call their friends, but nobody answers. 
the leader and two other men walk to the forest where we are hiding. The captain and Friday attack them when they are close to us. The leader is killed immediately. The second man is injured. The third man runs back to the boat. Then we all go out of the forest. We run to the boat. The captain speaks to sailors. He tells them to give up. When the sailors understand the situation, they drop their weapons quickly. We decide to tie the prisoners, but we don't tie all of them. The captain trusts three of the men. We don't tie these three men. Now, we are ten men. We start to plan how to get the ship. After some discussion, we know what to do. Friday and I stay on the island. We have to watch the prisoners. The captain, his assistant, and the passenger take the clothes of some of the prisoners. They want to look like them. Then the captain and his sailors take the boat. They go to the ship. When they are near the ship, they speak to the men on the ship. They tell them that it isn't possible to find the other men. When all of the men from the boat are on the ship, the captain shows his face and the attack begins. Some sailors are injured in the battle. Only one person is killed. It's the second leader of the rebellion. When the captain has his ship again, we hear seven shots. It's the signal that the ship is in captain's hands again. I'm happy when I hear the shots. Soon the captain goes back to the island. He tells me that the ship is now under my control. I'm so happy. I start to cry. I cry so much that I can't speak. After 10 minutes, I'm able to speak again. I speak to the captain. I tell him how happy I am. The captain tells his men to bring a lot of food from the ship. We eat good food. We celebrate our victory and my departure from the island. We drink expensive wine. We eat pork, beef, and vegetable. We eat biscuits for dessert. I'm very happy when I eat this food again. The captain gives me new clothes. I have new clothes after a long time. The clothes are very light. They are a little uncomfortable first, but it's soon okay. When the party is finished, we discuss what to do with the five prisoners who the captain doesn't trust. The men are really horrible. The captain doesn't want to take them on board the ship as prisoners. It's too dangerous. I tell the captain to discuss it with the prisoners. Maybe they want to stay on the island. It's better for them because their rebellion means death in England. We go to them and we explain the situation. They have to choose between a death in England and a life on the island. I think that it's fair to let them decide. They decide to stay on the island. We put them in the cave. The cave is now the prison. I tell them to wait for more orders. I need some time to prepare for the journey. I need to plan what to take with me. But then I see that I don't need to take many things. I decide to take my dog, my parrot, my book, and some other small things. I also take the money, gold and silver, which are from the ships. They are finally useful to me. I meet with the prisoners again. I show them my corn and my animals, and I tell them about the island. Then I go on board the ship. We leave the island in December 1686. It's 27 years after my first step on the island. First, we go to the island where Friday's people live. 
The Spanish and Portuguese sailors are very happy when they see us. They are happy that we have a ship. Now we don't have to build a new ship. We can go to Europe. My dog is very happy too. When he sees one of the Spanish sailors, he runs to him very quickly. He jumps on him. He is extremely happy. The Spanish sailor is his owner. He is very happy too. He starts to cry when he sees his dog. It's a very emotional meeting. The sailors start to prepare for our journey across the ocean. Friday has to make a decision. He can stay with his people. Or he can go to Europe with me. He needs some time to think about it. We stay on the island one night. In the morning, I ask Friday if he knows what to do. He tells me that he wants to go with me to Europe. He prepares everything for the journey. We are ready to go. We start our journey. Two months later, after a safe journey across the ocean, we arrive to London. For me, it's after 35 years. It looks like the whole world is different after those years. Some parts of London are new. I think about another journey to Brazil. I want to see my son, my wife, and my plantation. I think that I can move to Brazil. But I don't know if my wife wants to live with me. After some longer thinking, I decide to go to Brazil, but only for a visit. I want to see if it's okay to live there again. I write to my wife. I ask her if it's okay to visit them for some days. With the letter, I send nice presents to her and her father's family. Then I get a letter from my wife. She writes that I'm welcome to visit them. Her invitation makes me happy. I start to plan another journey by sea. I buy nice presents for them. Two weeks later, I'm ready to go. When we arrive to Brazil, I meet with my wife and my son. My wife is different now, but she is still very beautiful. My son is a big man. He is very strong. He is also very intelligent. He has his own family too. He has also big responsibility. He manages plantations of all the family. He is responsible for a big land. My son speaks only Portuguese and a little Spanish. My Portuguese isn't very good after so many years. I don't remember many words. I remember only some basic words. But with practice, I start to remember words fast. In two weeks, I can have a basic conversation on many topics. And one month later, I'm able to speak very well. I'm very happy that I can speak with my wife and my son. We have so many things for a conversation. Brazil is also very different. People have different clothes. They build new types of houses. Plantations are much bigger. Many people work on them. I'm with my family for three months. I know that I'm not very far from my island. I think about visiting the island again. I want to see the island for some days. Friday also wants to see the island again. My son also wants to go. I think that it isn't a good idea. I know how dangerous the sea can be. But he wants to see the place which he knows only from my stories. We plan our journey. Two weeks later, we leave Brazil. We go on a ship which goes to Havana. We have an agreement with the captain. He promises to stop at my island on the way there. When I arrive at my island, we meet with Friday's people. They now live on the island. I ask them, where are the prisoners? 
They tell me that the prisoners are not on the island. They don't know where they are. Maybe they are all dead. Friday's people tell me that they don't eat Europeans. They eat only their enemies from other islands. I am happy when I hear that. I want to stay on. The island and my son, too. I ask the captain if he can take us back to Brazil on the way back. He agrees. I see many children who run around. It's interesting to see many people on my island. I see that the people on the island are very happy. Friday is happy there too. He needs a woman. He likes her very much. Friday asks me if it's okay that he stays on the island with his woman. He knows that he lives thanks to me. He doesn't want to leave me without my permission. I agree. He doesn't have to stay with me all his life. It's time for Friday to start his own family. I'm happy that he has a good woman. I'm happy when I see that they love each other. I respect Friday's decision to stay on the island. I walk around the island a lot. I want to visit all the places which I know from my life on the island. I have some favorite places, for example, the Fruit Valley. I spend a lot of time there. I like this place very much. My son likes the island, too. He often walks around the island with me. I tell him many other stories about my life here. We stay on the island for 20 days. Then the ship from Havana comes. It's time to leave. We say goodbye to Friday and his people. When we leave the island, I have a strange feeling. I feel tears in my eyes. I like this place very much. My heart is connected with this island forever. <laughs>